Algebra 2, solving quadratics by factoring, finding the greatest common factor and the difference of squares. Now before we get into those two things, the greatest common factor and the difference of squares, we're going to talk about something called the zero product property. You will use this rule once you have factored your quadratics to solve them. So first of all, just fill in the blanks for this property. If two things multiplied together equal zero, so we can represent those two things by an a and a b. So if a times b equals zero, then either a has to equal zero or b has to equal zero. So one of the two things has to equal zero. It's just a logical thought <clears throat> in math. So this is what it looks like. We have these two expressions multiplying together and those are called factors and they both equal zero. So our zero product property rule states that one or the other has to be equal to zero. So we just take both of those expressions separately and set them equal to zero. We say equal zero. Then we just do the math to solve. And we get the two possible answers that if plugged in would make that expression zero. So let's look at another one. Here are your two things. So this is like your a, your first term, and this is your second term. And they're multiplying together to equal zero. So that zero product property rule tells us that one or both of them should equal zero. So we set both of them equal to zero and then solve. And what we get are the two numbers that if we plugged them back into the equation, that expression would equal zero. This is a little bit different than the first two, but we still have two things multiplying together to equal zero. So we set each of them equal to zero and solve. I'm going to divide by three, so x equals zero and then subtract 5 over. So keep that in your mind, this zero product property rule, because again, we will come back to it after we have factored our quadratics to do the final step to solving to find out what values we can plug in to make the equation true. When factoring a quadratic, we always look for a greatest common factor first. And remember from Algebra 1 that the question you ask to find that is what is a common number and or variable that divides into all terms. So if you look at our first problem, x squared plus 2x equals 0, notice that you have 1x that is common to both of those terms. So we're going to do what we call factor that out. And it's like reverse distributing. So we just write that single x and then we open a parentheses. And it's like we are dividing this x from each of these terms. And we write what we have left inside the parentheses once we have divided. <clears throat> so our directions say to factor, which is what we just did. When you factor something, you break it into what can multiply together to give you that expression. The second part of our directions say to solve. So now we're going to use that zero product property rule that we just covered and we're going to set each of these equal to zero. So our two answers are when x equals zero and x equals negative two, it, this equation, expression here on the left side, will equal zero. <clears throat> now when factoring, we want to get all terms, first of all, over to one side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract my 9x from both sides and move it over to the left side. Now I'm going to look and see what common number and variables do I have in each term. Well, I can divide 3 into both 3 and 9 and also a single x. So that goes out front. I open my parentheses. When I divide 3x squared by 3x, I'm just left with the single x. And then when I divide negative <clears throat> 9x by 3x, oops, 
up. So just by 3x there, I'm left with a negative 3. And that will equal 0. Okay, so I have completed the first set of directions factoring. I've broken this expression apart into two things that I'll multiply together. Now to do the second part, I set each of those two parts equal to 0. I'm going to divide by 3, so x equals 0, and then add my 3 to both sides, so x equals 3. Okay, last one, 2x squared plus 5x equals 0. Well, 2 and 5 don't have a common factor except for 1, and I don't need to factor that out. But they do have a common factor of a single x, so I can factor that out. 2x <clears throat> squared divided by x is simply 2x. 5x squared divided by x is 5. So now I have factored, and then to solve, I set each of these expressions equal to 0. So I'll need to subtract my 5 and then divide by 2. Okay, so factoring um, out a greatest common factor is looking for a common number and or variables that divide into all terms and then pulling it out to the front. <clears throat> it's like reverse distributing. And then solving is using that zero product property to just finish the problem. Factoring is a process, so after looking for a greatest common factor, we look for a difference of squares if we have two terms. So the question to ask is, what numbers or variables can I square to get the terms? So the first thing to remember are your, fact, your, sorry, your perfect squares. So, <clears throat> so take a moment and just write down your perfect squares, 1 to 144. And to get that, you know, I just squared 1 and then squared 2 and 3 and 4 and that way you'll have them right in front of your face so that you can remember. Okay, x squared minus 9. So first I'm going to look for a common, um, greatest common factor. The only common number that I have that divides into both is 1 and I don't have variables in each. So now I look at my second question, difference of squares. What numbers or variables can I square to get the terms. Well, I can square x to get x squared, and I can square 3 to get 9. Now, there's a pattern for a difference of squares. If you have figured out that you have a difference of squares, then you can break that apart <clears throat> into the first term plus the second times the first term minus the second. That's how it will factor or break apart every time. So what that means here is that this will factor as x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now we want to go ahead and solve so we're just going to set each of these equal to 0. To get our answers. The next problem, <clears throat> 3x squared minus 12 equals 0. We have a common factor of 3. So let's start by dividing that out. We're going to keep the 3 that we factored out to the front, but now we're going to look inside our parentheses and see if we can keep factoring, which we can because this is a difference of two things that are being squared. This is an x that's being squared, and this is 2 that's being squared. So I'm going to keep my 3, and then I can rewrite this as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now when we go to solve this, the first thing we want to do is we can just divide both sides by that 3. 
and 0 divided by 3 is 0. Then we'll set each of these equal to 0 and solve. So our two answers are negative 2 and positive 2. All right, on this last one, let's first of all move our 25 over to the left side by subtracting it. Now we're going to look for any greatest common factors, but there's no common factors of 4 and 25. Only one, and we don't need to divide that out, and each terms they don't have a common variable. So I'm going to look and see if I have, if they can be expressed as something squared. Well, I know that 2 squared is 4, and if I square an x, I get x squared, and I know that 5 squared is 25. So this will factor as 2x plus 5, so the first term, that's like my a term, plus my second term, this is my b term, times 2x minus 5. Then I'm going to take each of these and set them equal to 0. So my first answer is negative 5 halves. Now I'm going to add that 5 and divide by 2. So our second solution is 5 halves. Now take a look at these steps that I have for you on your note sheet. So here's the process of factoring quadratics. These are the steps, like a flow chart in your mind. And actually, there is a flow chart at the end of the Concept 10 notes that you can look at to help you go through this process. The first thing you're going to look for is a greatest common factor and factor that out, if you can, if it has one. The second step, examine the number of terms. Um, that you have left. If there are two terms, you're going to look for that special factoring pattern, a difference of squares. That means you can express both of those terms as something that's being squared, and then it will factor as a plus b times a minus b. So pause the video and do the two independent practice problems. Remember in the first problem, you're going to need to move everything over to the left side of the equation equal sign first before you start the factoring process. Then come back and check your answers. Here's the answer for number one. After you move the 49 over, you should have noticed that you have a difference of squares. You have 2x that's being squared to give you 4x squared and a 7 that's being squared. Then when you notice a difference of squares pattern, it will factor as the first term plus the second so 2x plus 7 times the first term minus the second, 2x minus 7. Set those each equal to 0, and you'll get those two answers. Here's the answer to number 2. You should have noticed that um, there was a greatest common factor of 6x to factor out um, for starters. Then set each of those terms, 6x equal to 0 and x plus 2 equal to 0, and solve and that will give you your two solutions there. And now you're ready for the next concept.